Hi, my name is Renee Rizzo. This will be a teacher facing video, which will guide you through my adaptation of Passports of Social Studies, Grade 8, Unit 3, Day 3. I chose to adapt this lesson, although I teach high school students in alternate assessment settings, because Passports of Social Studies also focuses on U.S. history at the 11th grade level. There are relevant lessons in the 4th, 7th, and 8th grade Passports of Social Studies curriculum that address U.S. history at a level that is often more developmentally appropriate and accessible for students in alternate assessment settings. In this video, I will be using Nearpod and demonstrating various features it offers to make lessons more immersive and engaging. Native American Assimilation, Passport to Social Studies Grade 8, Unit 3, Day 3. The focus question from the original lesson, which I decided to keep. How did U.S. expansion affect different cultures? The next generation learning standard, I believe, was most addressed in this lesson, RH7. Integrate visual information in charts, graphs, photographs, videos, or maps with other information in print and digital texts. Related NYSA DLM essential element. Analyze information presented in different media on related topics to answer questions or solve problems. The vocabulary, which I believed was essential to the comprehension of this lesson, so I decided to define at the beginning with a definition that was found within the lesson. Assimilation, being made to look, act, and think like the dominant culture, in this case, certain white American children. The Dawes Act. So in the original lesson, the Dawes Act came later in the lesson after analyzing the images, but I thought I would put it in the beginning of the lesson to increase the likelihood that students would comprehend the message portrayed in the images. So instead of including the entire act, I summarized it using bullet, bulleted points. So the Dawes Act was passed by Congress in 1887. It attempted to break up traditional Native American organizations to make Native Americans more mainstream. Reservation lands were no longer to be used communally, but were broken down into smaller plots. Native Americans who accepted land became full American citizens. In schools, Native Americans were forced to learn the white man's way of life. So key points of a Sioux girl's reaction to the Dawes Act. So this document, a Sioux girl's reaction to the Dawes Act, also came later in the lesson. And instead of presenting the entire um, reaction to the students, I also decided to summarize this using bulleted points to make it a little bit more uh, accessible for the students. So white people wanted the Sioux to cut their long hair, but in Sioux culture, only unskilled warriors who were captured got their hair cut by the enemy. The Sioux girl did not want to submit to the wishes of the white people without putting up a fight. They had already made her exchange her moccasins for shoes. She hid under a bed, but when caught, she attempted to kick and scratch wildly, but she was carried downstairs and tied to a chair. They cut her hair and the girl said she lost her spirit. She had already been taken away from her mother. People had stared at her and she described having been tossed around like a wooden puppet. Now with her hair cut, she felt she looked like a coward. She cried for her mother, but no one came to help her. She described being like one of many little animals driven by a herder. So this is the first image, and it's also presented in the original lesson. So in this image, you could see that the students, some of them are barefoot, and they are wearing more of the traditional um, dress of their culture, and many of them have long hair. In image two, you see that the students are wearing clothing that is more similar to what white students might wear back in that time, and many of the students have had their hair cut and they're all wearing shoes. 
So here's an open-ended question that I developed based on the images and based on questions that were in the original lesson that I just broke down into more manageable pieces. So what do you see that is the same between these two images? So with this question, I would definitely recommend going back to the two pictures so students can really analyze them and pull out what they see that is the same. Now, another open-ended question, what do you see that is different between these two images? And I would recommend using the same procedure to go back to the pictures, which for our students in alternate assessment settings, we consider pictures to be text. So they're going back to the text and they're looking for evidence in the text of what is different. So I then use the quiz feature in Nearpod to develop a multiple choice question. How have the children changed? So the options, A, they are taller, B, they are wearing different clothing and have different hairstyles, or C, there are a lot more children in the sec second picture. So the answer is they are wearing different clothing and have different hairstyles. I then incorporated a poll, which is another feature in Nearpod. So do you think these children look happy? Yes or no? So students can answer the question. They can also compare their answer to the answers of their classmates to see if they are mostly in agreement with their classmates or not. And then I would definitely go back to the picture after you, both pictures, after you answer this question and see if you can find evidence that the children look happy or the children look unhappy. And I would go over what that evidence could be with students. It could be facial expressions. It could be body language, right? So next, the Dawes Act, um, a class discussion. How do you think Native Americans felt about this act and why? And if necessary, I would definitely once again, go back to the bulleted points of the Dawes Act to summarize what it is about. And then you could also go over the reactions of the Sioux girl to the Dawes Act to determine how Native Americans felt about the act and why. So finally, there is another open-ended question. What do you think the US government was trying to do in setting up the Indian schools the way that they did? So in this lesson really asks students to grapple with in the eyes of the white people, what do you think they were trying to do and why? What was their point of view? And in the eyes of the Native Americans who were forced to assimilate, how do you think they would feel about this? So just to go over, this was a teacher-facing video which guided you through my adaptation of Passport to Social Studies Grade 8, Unit 3, Day 3. I chose to adapt this lesson, although I teach high school students in alternate assessment settings because Passport to Social Studies also focuses on U.S. history at the 11th grade level. There are relevant lessons in the 4th, 7th, and 8th grade Passport to Social Studies curriculum that address U.S. history at a level that is often more development, developmentally appropriate and accessible for students in alternate assessment. In this video, I use Nearpod and demonstrated various features it offers to make lessons more immersive and engaging. I should also point out, I chose this particular lesson because it inc incorporated images which support comprehension for students in alternate assessment. And it also called for students to identify emotions, which is often a skill that we work on with students in alternate assessment settings, and to empathize with others um, that they learned about through text, whether that text be images or actual words on a page. So thank you for watching.